Welcome back to simulation and prototyping. This week we're going to be developing an ISOVIST analysis, which is essentially an urban view or any type of view analysis. And this is constrained your as you move through a space, your view is constrained by whatever happens to be containing or defining that space. And so as we can see on the screen right now, what I've done is I've tracked three paths through the city, one moving in this direction, another moving in this direction, and one moving through like this. And so what we've done is we've ex extracted the geometry from Rhino and brought it into Illustrator, used Illustrator to just play with the, the tone and the density and the overlap of all of these lines. So this is a kind of two-part tutorial. The first is to introduce Elk, which is a useful tool for grabbing open source uh, data on cities. And I'll show you how to work with that. Really great for developing uh, site plans and site analysis. Second part is how to use the ISOVIST tool in, right, or in Grasshopper and how to tweak it a little bit to do some of the things that, that we'll do to develop a drawing like this. So let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is to install Elk. And let me open that on Food for Rhino. If you search for Elk, and this is what we're looking for. And what I would recommend is starting with the download, the most recent one, which now is at the bottom, Elk 2.2.2. We'll download this. It'll save it as a zip file into your downloads or wherever you have your preference set for your downloads. And let me open it. I'm not gonna go through installing it because I've already got it installed, but what you should do, because I think I didn't, do this the first time I did it, right click it. And on properties, make sure that before you unzip it or decompress it is to click unblock and apply because you're gonna need to unblock all of this. And if you don't do it first, which I didn't do, I had to go file by file by file or yeah, file by file by file to unblock all of those things. And I believe if you unblock it first and then unzip it, they'll all be unblocked. Take a look, follow the instructions on Food for Rhino and um, it should work for you. Once you do that, should look something like this. In my, in my Grasshopper, it comes under extra in terms of the plugins. And I downloaded both because I wasn't sure what we would need, but what you just downloaded should be Elk 2. And all we really need are these three items. And so we'll get started with this. What I'm gonna do the first thing for this week is that we're gonna start a new Rhino file and I'm gonna do large objects and meters. And the reason why I'm gonna do meters is that the open, the open source or open street data is in meters. And so this way the, the units will match up. So we'll, we'll click large objects meters and say, okay, open. And then we'll start a new grasshopper file. And let's pull down both the location and the OSM data. And we'll connect these. And in order to do this, let's start, let's see, let's go to the website. 
And the website that you're going to want to go to is called OpenStreetMap. So you can Google it or it's OpenStreetMap.org and you can choose a city. And actually, you know what? I'm going to choose New York because I want to show you something and make a distinction between some of the different types of data that's available. It would help to type it correctly. And I wanna do New York only because I know that there is a lot of three-dimensional data available. And we'll see the difference between some of the 2D data and some of the 3D data. So let's, and, and you have to be careful. You can't get too large of an area otherwise, and maybe I'll show you what happens when you do. So what you wanna do is find a city. You can do it by searching or by scrolling around. Then we're going to click export. And then we can manually select a different area. And so let's, I'm gonna intentionally try and make this large, assuming this is too large. Once you crop the area that you want, click export. And here's, here's the error I was expecting. You requested too many nodes. And so request a smaller area. So I'm gonna go back just because I wanted you to see that as, a, as an error. I'm gonna zoom in. I don't know what to tell you in terms of um, what, what's an appropriate area, but we'll start with something like this. I'm gonna do export and that's going to download it. It's gonna put it in my downloads and I'll just right click and show the folder. Let's do. Just wanna, I don't want to overwrite something else. And you'll see it's an OSM file. You could save this somewhere else. Uh, for me, I'm just going to leave it in downloads because it's this is a kind of disposable thing for the tutorial. But what we'll do when we start is that we need to set the file path. And this will be under parameters and primitive and file path. And so what we're going to do is to set the file path for this, we'll right click and select one existing file. When we do that, it's going to open a dialog box. And I'm going to find my downloads. And then here's the file that I just downloaded. I'll say, okay, I want to collect, or sorry, connect the file path to this component. And then I want to connect the OSM point data to here, the OSM data and the OSM file to the OSM file path. And this might take a minute uh, and I, yep, there we go. This is pretty, depending on what your, what uh, data set you're working with, it can be intensive. The other thing is that depending on where it is and the scale, you may see nothing happen. And so you should click zoom extents to find that. And so you'll see that what came in are a bunch of points. And so we can do a couple of things here. First is that we can right click on our OSM data component. And you see, we can say create 3D buildings. I'm gonna have to think about this. And I believe, let's see, let's look at this in 3D. So 
So now we have three-dimensional building data. And this is not, so this works really well. There are other cities where there's just two-dimensional information. And so we can work with these in different ways. What I would do here is I would uh, create, let's say, geometry as an output, and we could connect buildings to this. We could hide all of the points, and now we have the three-dimensional building information. So this is a really incredible tool. Depending on what site you're working on, some sites will have three-dimensional information. The other thing that we can do is, uh, let's copy this. Again, it can be, you have to be a little patient. We're dealing with some big data. As that's copied, I can even hide this. And I could even disable that. And then with this object, we can preview it. We can right click and we can change 3D buildings. We can click that off. And now we're back to the points. We can right click again, and now we can get feature type building. And we can get all of these other aspects in terms of railway, public transportation, land use, historic information. Not data and points aren't necessarily available for all of these, but if there's something specific that you're looking for, it's, it's worth exploring. And the other thing that we can do is we could add a polyline and connect the vertices. And we can see now we're starting to get two-dimensional information. And depending on what we want, with this and depending on the data that we've pulled, we could keep this. Let's try one thing and that we could do boundary surfaces and see if this works. I don't know in, in some of the data that I've pulled, it's not always perfectly clear or it's not always, all of these aren't always perfectly closed. So we'll see what happens when I do this. And you can see that there's some, a majority of the buildings this worked well. Some of the buildings, the, the geometry is not fully closed. We could go in, we could close that, and we could fix it. So if we, if we wanted to get some simple representation of these, we can add our custom preview. tie the geometry to this and start to control some of this, right? So we can hide any of these things. So that gives us a simple, in this case, a two-dimensional representation. Watch if we turn, this is flat again, and this is because we didn't, we weren't pulling the three-dimensional buildings, we are pulling the two-dimensional buildings. Let's just swap this out. We can right-click this data again, right-click, and change from building features to, let's say, highway. Let's see what happens. Here, it's probably a little funky because, again, the boundary surfaces may or may not make sense. But if we connect the polyline, so now we get center lines of major roads, change highway. Parks. And so again, you just have to see if this has the data that you're looking for and go from there. Uh, let's go back to buildings for a second. In terms of the two-dimensional buildings. 
And let's imagine working with this. We can go back to the plan view, the top view, and we can go from there. Actually, what I want to do, though, is not work with this information, but I want to pull a different city. And so let me just go through that process once more. If that was totally clear to you, feel free to fast forward. But I want to pull a different city. And let me look at Prague. Just because I want, uh, I'd like to look at an urban square that's a little bit more open. And there's a nice contrast between the tight streets in Prague and the kind of openness of the main square in the city. And so just to do this once more, kind of want to zoom out a little bit. I'll go, I'll click export, I'll select an area, and maybe it defaults to this, we'll see. Um, this is actually even more data than I need, so I can constrain it a little bit. And then I'll say export. Just want to rename it. So you can see I've downloaded a number of different cities and different places. And all we have to do is come back here, right click on file path, select one, and select our new file. What we should get in a minute. Here's just our outlines of our buildings. And some of this data, again, might be a little, a little wonky. Some of the key pieces are missing for what we need, but we can fill it in and we can correct it. So this is a good spot to stop. Um, and I'll, I'll stop the tutorial here. This gives you access to the, the open source data for the cities. Some cities will have more information or no information. Others will have more information. And with that, we'll start the next portion of the tutorial about how to begin working with this data.